Right, good morning, guys. Hmm. Have you switched from paper to... Yeah, now I'm trading. This is the first time in nine years I'm trading real real money. It's going to be awesome. I, I re removed the thing that says paper account. So now I'm trading real money. Uh, opening range, opening ro range highs, opening range lows. Take, it can be the one, first one minute candle. It can be the first five minute candle and it can be the first 60 minute candle. I use all three of them. The one and five minute ones are have a little bit smaller uh, or like lower um, uh, accuracy. You get stopped out a bit more often. Uh, but on the other hand, you get in uh, earlier. So there are pros and cons. I use them all. Like many times I get stopped out. Like I may take a starter on the like one minute candle opening range highs or opening range lows when I'm shorting and then I get stopped out and then uh, I rebuy it like on the f uh, like when it takes out the highs again or reshort if it takes out the lows like it, it happens the one minute opening range highs and lows is the one with the highest fail rate but sometimes you can get it in, get in really 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 early so I think it's still worth it but you know you can you can do whatever you want as long as the stocks doesn't start running, because you know if you have a, a good setup, you want to get in as uh, as early as possible. But, you know you can you can experiment with it. That's what I do. I sold Kodak uh, pre-market, it had a, I don't know, I think he had some news, uh, but I took a, took a small loss on Kodak. I lost like uh, 30k on it or something like that. No, sorry, 47, 47k, okay, okay, it was a bit more than I thought. I had to chase it down a little bit, it was kind of thin. You know, with these kind of stocks, you see them like printing red candles in after hours of pre-market, you just gotta get out, you know, this thing could gap down 50% overnight, you know, just go down another 50%. It's, it's like the biggest third of the third. It's not an institutional quality stock, it's just a pure pump. So that was unfortunate.
Hey, thank you. I don't cast. That's a that's a really good thing. Uh, and linking all of those things. That, uh, I really appreciate it. Why am I so against day day trading options? Even worse. I don't know. <laughs> It's I, I I wrote about it on my uh, on my about page. I do know, I do know why I'm against options. Uh, no, Mara, I'm, I sold a little bit yesterday, but it's acting really well. It's not breaking down, so we'll see. <laughs> Is David muted? E H T H. Uh, dude, this is a totally broken short. Don't trade this. It's just a random piece of shit short. You gotta be in the momentum leaders. <clears throat> All right. So C, I was I've been swinging it since last week. Uh, gapping up um, on earnings. Sold some after hours. Let's see where this thing, you know, maybe can go to 100 going forward. Workhorse, I sold half of my shares yesterday before the close, since it closed kind of weak. Um, closed right at the 10 day, but it looks like it's gapping up today. And, you know, look, I may rebuy those shares because it bounced off the rising 10 day. And, you know, if it can hold and take out this low 70 low mid 17 range i mean this thing could finally go TTD also swinging since last week. Oh, from Monday. Wait, Thursday when? Yeah, from last week. Um, gapping up a little bit on earnings. Godex bounced off the 10 day yesterday really beautifully. Gotta raise my stop a little bit. Livongo, I'm still short from a couple of days ago. Envax, I'm still short from yesterday. Overstock, I'm short from yesterday. Well, most most stocks, uh, most of my stocks are acting really well. Nothing really to. Common. Beely scapping down. The whole China uh, uh, sector is uh, gapping down. I'm gonna lower my stop a little bit to the entry day lows. I just wanna see how it acts. Like, if it can't bounce early in the day, uh, you know, I'm probably gonna sell it. But we'll see. The, all, all of the China names are gapping lower. Uh, let's see. Big C. Twitter triggered again yesterday. I did not buy it. I mean, a bunch of stuff already. Damn, AGQ is gapping down. I was hoping this would gap to like 75 or something today. This Carvana. Hmm. I think it's just gonna be a short in it eventually. Is it gonna be today? I'm not sure. And GSX2, it's unfortunately gapping down because all the China names are gapping down. Do you guys know why China is gapping down? Where it, was there some news or some macro stuff, political stuff? Or is it just a random gap down? Trump banned. Oh, he finally banned TikTok? Okay.
Wasn't Microsoft gonna buy them? I thought there were talks about uh, Microsoft buying them. Wasn't there? Oh, okay. No, I didn't get stopped out of overstock short. It never, uh, I, I never took out the um, highs of the day. It had this uh, midday uh, bounce and then uh, started fading again, and then I lowered my stop uh, to this uh, lower high. It just put in another uh, uh, lower high. Yeah, but the commission-free brokers have shitty executions because they're selling your order flow. I'm, uh, I, I think you know these commission-free uh, brokers are probably more expensive. Yeah, you don't pay any commissions, but you're getting shitty executions instead. There is no free lunch. There is no such thing as free trading. All right, market opens in two minutes. A lot of uh, these growth names are selling, uh, are gapping down lately, um, which is really, you know, on, on good numbers. But you know, we've had a huge run since March lows. A lot of these names have doubled, tripled, quadrupled, like. D dog, you know this thing was up 240% of the lows, and you know, let's see if it can reclaim the 50-day uh, moving average. They just need more sideways. Uh, I'm kind of happy that the two uh, uh, stocks that reported earnings that I, I'm long, that they're gapping up. The TTD and Z are both gapping up, so I'm very, very grateful. And D dog, I was long yesterday too, but you know, this is the reason you know you want to have some profit cushion if you're gonna hold into earnings, you know, so you can, you know, withstand some volatility. Like if the stock had been, you know, like a hundred bucks, I I would have probably held like half or, or so of my position into earnings. Then the gap time wouldn't have hurt as much, and maybe even wouldn't have stopped me out. But you know, if you don't have profit cash and you're holding to earnings, you know, it's just gambling. And I am not a gambler. Okay, the markets are open. Let's see what we get today. I'm not super excited uh, about any of of these setups today. I shorted a starter of GSX. Um, it's probably gonna stop me out. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, um, I was a little bit too trigger happy on GSX, I think. Or maybe not, we'll see. Okay. Stop that with that one. <clears throat> oh, fiver. Nice follow through from yesterday's short. Need to cover some here. Group bomb? Uh, no. Not for me. It could work. If it had a big beat and stuff like that, but it's not really a type of stock. I mean, it's just <clears throat> not really a good stock. Yeah, this Roku looks good. Uh, not today, but maybe for next week. Like it's still building higher lows. Yesterday's gap down on earnings uh, undercut the 20-day 
but reclaimed and put in another higher low so this short is still intact like this thing if it starts breaking out next week i'll be in it sale yeah i saw it it's too thin for me i didn't look at the numbers but oh yeah this thing has really good numbers yeah really really good numbers uh yeah actually sale is a pretty good setup too uh but it's too late to buy it now you you, you had to be on it like sub 36 sub 37 gotta be early on these things gotta be quick yeah ONTX looks like a decent setup needs to break that 112 area or something and lock now when I think about I and no uh, it's still riding, surfing the 50 day. Could be a good setup for next week if it puts in a tight uh, candle here. Guys, if you haven't, go to my about page and read uh, everything in there before you comment anything or ask questions. Pets? No, I, there's nothing there. This Mara is holding up incredibly well. For now, at least. Looks I have to sell this TPHC for about break even. For the rest of my shares, it never really went as I thought it would. Thought it would go more.
Yes, I know Carvana skyrocketed. The real, real. No, they report. Wait, they should have reported yesterday. Oh yeah, nope. It's, it's not a momentum leader. It's there's no volume. It, it's it's shitty, uh, shitty numbers too. Like look at this thing. It, it's just the business is just going the wrong way. Look at the revenue growth. A big revenue growth. 55%, 86, 52, 54, 55, 57, then 11% and now minus 21%. You know. Not really for me. And it's not a good breakout chart, you know. It's not a momentum leader. Got to trade the momentum leaders. Zillow is this is a momentum leader. Okay, overstock I'm out. Took a took a fifty three thousand dollar loss on it. This thing is not going anywhere. <laughs> it's not going down. Uh, maybe yeah, if it keeps going, I'll retry next week. This thing is just, I, you know, who knows where it can go? 150? Unbelievable stock. Like, overstock is going to have a big, big pullback eventually. Like 20, 30% in a few days. But uh, just not yet. Just not yet. Why not long? Do you see a setup on it? Did I move my stop on Zoom? I don't know. Nope. My opinion about market makers? It's just a ban bunch of algos and they don't care about you. And you shouldn't care about them. That's what I think about market makers. Is plug looking like a short here? It's absolutely not looking like a short. Absolutely not. Damn, Lake put in another higher low, another higher low, and now it reclaimed the range. This stupid thing just had to stop me out. Shake, uh, yeah, but it's not a good setup. Here it had a good setup. This is a good setup. This is not a good setup. It needs to be on the moving averages, like on the 10 or the 20 or the 50. Right now, it's 10 days nowhere near. It's not a good setup. If 
you want to make millions, you got to trade good setups. Otherwise, you're probably going to blow up eventually. Guys, you don't need to focus on any other strategies. The one I've been uh, teaching, you know, the swing trading school, that's the only thing you need to be focusing on. You really don't need anything else. Trust me on that one. Just focus on good breakout setups. You don't need to trade every day. You don't need to trade every week. Big money is in waiting for really good setups and then once you find one is to trade them correctly and then wait until they stop you out in hopefully after uh, riding them for many weeks or months. Fastly, what about it? It's just fading. The key is to see if it can bounce off the rising 50 day, put in, in, put in another higher low. We could have a nice setup in this thing. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe not next week, but the week after. Roku is testing the upper end of its of its range here. Hopefully we get a nice setup to buy it next week.
Yeah, Overstock is setting up as a potential million dollar opportunity for next week if it can keep going. Incredible, unbelievable um, uh, <laughs> buying pressure on this thing. Yes, short opportunity. Red, yeah, Redfin broke out yesterday. That was a, like a four and a half star setup yesterday. Four star setup. Having follow through today. Yep. RH uh, when five years ago. No, not yet. Maybe next week. Man, this Tesla range is just unbelievable. I mean, 
this is this this is gonna be an enormous trade once it breaks. I really hope it breaks out and goes to like two thousand. But either way it breaks, I will be in it big size. GSX went green on the day or about to go green on the day. Very good. This is also gonna be a big opportunity for next week. Was X be a good buy on the fourth? Yeah, but it was an even better buy here. This was an even better setup right here. But yeah, this was a decent setup too. Not a great looking short. It's, you know, look, I see what you see, but it, it just doesn't have the momentum you're looking for. We're looking for the momentum leaders. This is not a momentum leader. I mean, it can work, but it's not really... Yeah, I got stopped out of GSX opening range highs. I kind of anticipated uh, it a little bit. I didn't wait for the first candle and then, you know, it was kind of choppy. I had a starter size, so it doesn't matter. Like, I, I don't, I never like when these stocks gap down. There's a very good, big probability that they rally back. The best ones are the ones that are extended and then they gap up. This BLDP, it, it's a pretty decent setup. Like it's in a hot sector, like plug is, you know, incredibly strong. Like this thing could work. I'm not gonna do it, but it's like a three star setup, three, you know. It undercut the 50 day, you know, it's, it's surfed below it but it's building like higher lows and now it's reclaiming so you know i think it could work oh net is going higher they, they reported earnings let's see here Uh, I'm not gonna do a swing trading school today. I'm just too exhausted. I already did like three or four of them this week. That's enough. I'll do a few ne next week. Do you trade gold and energy stocks? Sure, if they have momentum. Wow, this sale has some incredible numbers, wow. But the guidance isn't as good as I would like to, but... That's an enormous beat. Too bad it's so thin, though. 
Yeah, I can't read this thing. Yeah, it needs to, it needs to build some uh, sideways uh, candles here to get a good start. Oh shit, Livongo, I missed the ad on the short. Beely is weakening even more. PDD is bouncing, but Beely is not. That's not great. Owen? Absolutely not. ADR, 3%. Come on. No. And it's not a momentum leader. It's just a very slow moving stock. That's why it looks so tight. It's just a very slow stock. Stick to the faster moving stocks. ADR, 5 6% plus. You want to make big money, you got to be in the fast booming stocks. Well, you have to say swing. You, you got to put your own conditions in there. You can't use the 80 million dollar cutoff I'm using. I'm trading a big account. You gotta use a, you know, smaller and the higher ADR, smaller volume and higher ADR than I'm using. I'm selling all of my Mara here. I'm selling my last 80,000 shares. 
this was a home run trade. This was a half a million dollar trade almost. No, it was a half a million dollar trade in two weeks. Yeah, but look, it, 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 this thing has a 35 million market cap. They announced a hundred million dollar shelf. That's like three times their market cap, you know. And no. <laughs> I know, I know. But Well, I already sold half. I, you know, I sold half like, you know, on this day here I sold a bunch, yesterday I sold a bunch. But you know, sometimes when fundamentals sh change, you got to get out. Uh, you know, a hundred million dollar shelf on a 35 mar million market cap company. That's not to play around with. That's some insane selling pressure right there. <laughs> you remind me when it's a 10? You... Don't, don't, you fucker. <laughs> Guys, you need to watch my swing trading school on YouTube. Oh. <clears throat> I go over the basic methodology like 10 times. Check the past three videos I've uploaded to YouTube. Could the money raised by Mara possibly? Uh, it is possible, but uh, probably not. This thing, this this thing is uh, a, uh, a management enrichment scheme. You know, don't don't hope for too much. This is a known deluder. But hey, what do I know? If it sets up again, I'll buy it. Uh, you don't need to, you know, as beginners, you know, you don't, you don't need to really worry about the fundamentals. It's just easier if you just focus on the short. Just stick to the momentum leaders. Tesla is getting really tight between the 10 day and the 20 day moving averages. Holy shit, this thing is gonna have a 500 point move next week. I really hope the move is higher. I really hope the move will be higher. my stop on TTD just trailing the 10 day on this TTD W also raising my stop here W is a, such a home run trade now
Yeah, there's such there's something sketchy with Mark Minervini. There's some like his methodology is awesome. I learned a lot from him. But he keeps tweeting these very illiquid stocks to his um let's see how many followers does he have on Twitter. To his 168,000 followers. He keeps tweeting these micro caps and you know there's something wrong. I I don't know. Like, the guys should supposedly have made tens, if not hundreds and millions. Uh, and yet he's tweeting, you know, he has this uh, paid service that um, that's very expensive. And he keeps tweeting these uh, very liquid stocks to his hundreds of thousands of followers. Something is just not adding up. I don't know. His methodology is solid, but... It's like with the Peter Brand guy I talked about yesterday. It's something is just not adding up. I'm just selling a little bit more of W here. Yeah, but if you have a seven figure account, you don't need to follow anyone. Yeah, I mean, they, they're marketing, but my problem with Minervini is not his marketing. It's the fact he's tweeting these thin stocks to hundreds of thousands of people. There's a word for that. It's called pumping. No one following another trader is gonna is making money. You're not gonna make ever gonna make money following other people. Just putting it out there right now. 
you need to develop the skill yourself. You're never going to consistently make money by following other people. Yes, you can take ideas from other people. Understand the rationale behind the trade, but just following other people's trades, you're never going to make money consistently. <laughs> yeah exactly the, the, the less you guys write the less i have to respond the, the longer i'm gonna last uh, on the stream <laughs> this tesla is now testing the lower end of the range Like, th this, this is gonna re resolve in a big, big move either way. This is the 60 minute chart going back to uh, October or November. Like, once we resolve this, this tight range here we're in, I mean, the move is gonna be enormous, enormous move coming. Holy shit. Absolutely enormous move coming. Just like this consolidation here led to an enormous move. Once and when it broke out, you know, stock went up Damn, Carvana took out the lows of the day. Oh shit, I missed it. Maybe if it bounces, I'll, I'll uh, take a starter in it. And Tesla through the lows of the day, I'm tempted to take a starter, like a tiny, like with a very tight stop. I mean, it, it kind of... You know, it's just gonna slam back into range, but if this thing, you know, starts fading today and uh, closes weak, like again, I really don't want this thing to break down. But if it does, you know, I want to be in it.
GSX going to 200? Yes, please. I'd like to see this thing at go to 200. That's going to be an epic short opportunity. But right now, there's no setup there yet. Wait, so Bitcoin is pulling back, but GBTC is going higher. Uh, sorry, Overstock is going higher. Holy shit. That's incredible. The moves in this market are just unbelievable. Opinion on taco, it's a tight, tight one, but uh, is it a momentum leader? I mean, it looks decent, it looks decent. THC, what do you see here? You no know, setup here. Where are the setups on fuel cell and trill? Just random stocks having random updates. You guys, you need setups, specific setups. Buying random stocks on random moves is not gonna cut it if you wanna make it in this game. Everyone should spend at least a few hours studying setups this weekend. Good, a good starting point is uh, my swing trading school that I've uploaded to YouTube past three, four sessions. And then you need to do your own homework. You need to look at thousands of charts. Just look at how they behave. Develop your own skill set. Nah, no, not really. He was more of a position trader. I mean, look, yeah, I mean, sure, absolutely. It's similar. Similar to O'Neill, absolutely. Damn, this GSX looks so juicy. Gonna be a big, big... I just wish I had... If these stupid short uh, hit pieces hadn't come out on, like Citron was on it and Muddy Waters was on it, and you know, I just very. Uh, together with the LK debacle earlier this year, I, I, I was just too afraid to buy this GSX. I didn't want to get s stuck in a 50% alt. Like here, it had a good setup when it took, started taking out this range. And when it bounced off this 10 day moving average, like I saw it here, but I, I couldn't buy it. Like, I'm like this, you know, if it's a fraud, you know, I don't want to get stuck in a halt or, you know, a big gap down. And then it had another setup here, and this day here. And I, again, I passed on it and now look at it. It's just. Oh.
NIO long term? I have no idea about NIO long term. I have no idea. Yeah, you know, sometimes uh, knowing too much is working against you. And if you if you had just focus on the short, this thing would would have been like a red alert, red like like in a good way, right? Like this setup here, you know, good setup. And especially this one here. This one was a oh, fucking TC2000. Such a... They need to get the shit together. But this setup here. Like, I can't pinpoint this exact day. Look at this. Like, why can't I pinpoint this day? It's stupid. Uh, but this was, a, like, a really good setup. Really good. Five star. And now look at it. High tide flag. This is called a high tide flag. Look at this, just surfing the 10 day and the 20 day moving averages, higher lows all the way. Gotta, you need to memorize these things. And too, I unfortunately knew too much. I knew too much. Sometimes too much knowledge is gonna work against you. That's just what it is. That's just how it is. The C just keeps going. The what keys? Wait, wait, wait. Nope, doesn't doesn't work for me. Nope, 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 absolutely, it doesn't work for me. <clears throat> I see ya. Yeah, I see ya and it's a bit sideways. Maybe next week or the week after. The 10 day needs to catch up. Now this ARCT, I'm just leaving it here. You can uh, come to your own conclusion on that one. Sale? Wait, what? Flat on the day? It's up 18%. Well, the sa sale had a good setup coming into today. Now, it's a slow stock, ADR 3.3%. It's just too slow. Uh, but it had really good earnings. And you, you, got, you had to buy it opening range size. Like, you, you had to buy it. Like the a average true range on this is 1.24%. So the lows of the day is 35.25 or something like that. Let's just say 35.26. So 1.24. So you, you couldn't buy it higher than 36.50 or so. Otherwise, your stop would have been too wide. So you got to be on it really early. Yeah, this Roku, man. Ah, shit. Hopefully it can go side with a few minutes. It's probably going to go s straight up now. What do you mean it's flat on the day? It's still up like 
6% on the, from the open. That's two times the average daily range. It's not flat on the day. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, yeah, Chumia, holy shit. Uh, when do they report? The 12th on Wednesday? You know what? I'm going to rebuy it next week if it breaks this, uh, seven, you know, if it goes side this few more days. Oh, ARCT has earnings. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it has. Okay. Yeah. Then you can't. Yeah. It's too close to the earnings. That's always a little, uh, really annoying when you have a good setup, but it has earnings like the next day or something. It's just super annoying when that happens. That's something to keep in mind. Wow, overstock. Oh, these two. Like, oh my god, this overstock. And these things are both setting up as potential. Uh, at least half a million opportunity, half a million dollar opportunities, both of them. Overstock, I think, is a little bit more liquid. No, it's not. They're about to. See. Yeah, they're, they're both at least half a million dollar opportunities for next week. Holy shit. Oh man, I'm getting excited for next week. This week has been so so. Like, I've had some home run trades like W and TTD and Zillow, but I've also had like a bunch of losers like T Doc. These, these, they, they bought Livongo and the stock just. I went from being up like 150k on it to take a $60,000 loss. Like, if they haven't bought Livongo, this thing would be like 260s now. 270s today um, you know just you know super annoying and then I you know I've taken some losses here and there so this Beely why is this Beely so weak PDD bounced perfectly off the 10 day this Beely is n uh, now below the 10 day if it closes below the you know week I, I'll, I'm gonna sell all of it Uh, now I, I already know that now has a very low ADR, only 3.4%. Uh, it's a little bit of a choppy stock, but yeah, it looks like a good setup. But the ADR is too low. You shouldn't trade this thing. Stick to stocks, guys. You you need to put the ADR in your TC2000. You know, I, I always get get these like questions about low ADR stocks the answer is no even if the setup is good the answer is no you shouldn't trade it you gotta trade fast stocks if you're gonna make if you want to make you know big money explosive returns now I'm not gonna I'm not saying this won't work can it go up 10 15 percent sure but you want to be in stocks that can go up 20 30 50 percent those are the stocks you want to be in if you have a small account And those of you who don't have ADR, you know, get, you know, into your platforms, just get TC2000. I think there's a free version of TC2000. You can just use it to, you know, scan after hours or, or you know, scan after you close. And then you can put those, you know, stocks in your regular uh, platform. Add ADR, um, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I did it like five, six years ago. I think you do it like this. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so what you do, you go to easy scans. Um, no, wait. Yeah, here. Click new condition. And then you click like write formula. Here you click write ADR or average daily range or whatever. And you get the, the formula is on my about page. Just copy and paste it here. And here you get ADR. And then once you have saved that formula, then it will be on in your platform. Then you click here, edit toolbar, and then you add, uh, add the ADR. You, you just write ADR, click it, and then you will have ADR up here. Like I have it here. 
then you can immediately see and then you can put other stuff too you can put the earning state which i also like to have it's very convenient uh you know i have some stuff like market cap and float uh some stocks don't show the float for some reason but you know because like half the stocks people mention have like low adrs Oh, a P PFC indicator? Okay. Uh, wait, wait, wait. ADR and ATR. Wait, wait. I thought it was the other way around. I thought ATR doesn't include gaps. A average true range. And ADR does. Wait, wait. I, I, ATR does in include gaps, really? I thought it was the other way around. Uh, okay, this is too advanced for me. How to calculate ATR. Man, you gotta be just a rocket scientist. Like, all these stupid uh, invest trading sites, like, they, they just complicate things. Like, what the fuck is this? I mean, what the hell is this rocket science? Too, too complicated for me. Oh, wait, wait. I mean, I'm sorry, what the fuck is this? What does any of this mean? This is just stupid. Can't it just have an illustration? Like a candle with arrows and stuff? Oh, fuck this. Fuck Emosopedia. Oh, okay, yeah, AD, okay, daily high and low, okay, yeah, all right. You know what, then I don't need average to range. I only need ADR. You know what, I'm always looking to remove indicators just to, you know, like, slim slim it down. Just to only focus on the basics. I, I'm going to remove ATR. I've had ATR for many years. Guys, this is a historical moment, guys. I've had I've been using ATR down here for like five six years. Look at this. Look at this. Click, gone. Look at this. This is a historical moment. I'm also removing it here on my regular setup when I'm not streaming. Look at this. Where is it? And uh, click, gone. Wait. Keep ATR. Hey, come on. What the fuck, guys? Couldn't you say before I removed ATR? No, I'm just joking. No, I'm, I'll, I'll keep, um, I'll keep um, uh, EDR because I'm more interested in like let's let's just say uh, I'm gonna show you an example, right? Um, because I'm more interested in the intraday moves, not the gaps. Let, let, let's just look at something like overstock, okay? Or um, um, or like like. Um, uh, I don't know, like, um, mm, okay, like, like the Silo, okay, like Silo gapped up today, it gapped up what ten percent. So this gap up affected the ATR, but not the ADR, right? But let, let's say if this was a buyable setup, like coming off a nice chart, and I was looking to buy the opening range highs, or you know, just you know, buy it. Uh, during the day uh, so what I want I'm interested in the average intraday volatility I don't I'm not interested in the gap like it gapped 10% but it could have gapped 20% 30% right so no I'm gonna keep ADR ADR I, I, yeah it's better I'm more interested in the intraday uh, average volatility intraday Excluding the gaps. <laughs> Historical moment ruined. Hey, thanks, Big Tune. <laughs> oh.
Hey, IO Anomaly, uh, you, you should read my about page. Read my about page first. I, I need to check this. Uh, I, I need to. Someone made a big, big uh, tune. Made a made a made a clip. I need to check this. Look at this. Look at this. Clip gone. Look at this. This is a historical moment. I'm also removing this today from my regular setup. You know, not look at this. Uh, what? John. Wait, keep ACR. Hey, come on. What the fuck, guys? <laughs> Oh, I have to go to settings. Yeah, the market wizards are great books. ATR, yeah. It's called TC2000. Damn, Roku, no! Oh, come on.
how you can support me and encourage me. Uh, I don't know. The only thing you can do is study setups. Spend the weekend, at least a few hours, just looking at uh, you know uh, momentum leaders. You can start with the ones from this year, like the big winners this year. Just look at setups. And then you look at last year, and then you look at the uh, year before. No, I'm, I'm not going to touch GSX today. Like, I, I, you know, no. Probably not. Or maybe, uh, nah, no, I'm not com probably not going to touch it today. Or, uh, it depends. Yeah, maybe if it starts, you know, losing VVAP later. Um, maybe later. Yeah, we're, we're getting some uh, insane, uh, like a lot of irrational stuff, like insane moves in a lot of stocks. You know what, I, I, I took a starter on uh, GSX, like, yeah, I, I took a starter on it. Probably gonna stop me out, but... I'm gonna stock it like you know it's up what one one two three four five six seven days in a row it's up 70% well it's you know it's it's a big move uh, you know we'll see it's a tight stop couple of dollars stop
This workhorse dipped, and now it's starting to reclaim this $17 range again. If it takes out highs of the day, I'll add to my position. I'll add back what I sold yesterday. Damn, this peel is weak. Oh, SRNE, this one is a beast. We have tiny shares left, though. Pins broke out on this 60 minute range. This thing wants to go higher. W straight up. Oh yeah, I added a bit more. I have 15,000 shares short of this GSX, 15,000 shares. It's, it looks like it wants to uh, lose VVAP, potentially, or maybe not. Or it may put in another higher low and then it reclaim 138, it go to 150 by Monday. Oh, TTD woke up, holy shit. Okay, workhorse, I bought uh, back the 50,000 shares I sold yesterday. I'm gonna use the lows of the day as my stop for those shares. So I'm, I'm long 100,000 shares again. Uh, SRNE, my entry day was here when it broke out of a four star setup. This is my entry day. 829 is my entry. A funny thing is, I, I thought I was chasing a bit. <laughs> like intraday. I, I chased like 10 cents. And now look at it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I also no. I mostly use the 1020. Sometimes the 50 for entries, but I rarely trail the 50 as my stop. The Shopify is getting tight. It's building a high tight flag here. Gonna watch it next week. The 10 days catching up. This thing maybe wants to go to like 12, 1300. Definitely watching it next week. Man, there's some insane setups setting up, both on the long and the long side for next week. Unbelievable setups. Like Tesla. Uh, overstock, potentially GSX. Chumia looks interesting too.
I don't hedge. Okay, so far GSX built another higher low, it looks like, on the one minute short. But I will add later if it starts breaking this uh, mid low 135 area. SPWR. It was a setup here. Here was a potential setup. But now, no. But Chumia is going to be a setup for. Oh, Chumia is already. Oh, okay. Oh, Carvana, I should have reshorted it. Fuck, no. Oh, I should have reshorted this thing. No, wait, I never shorted it. Hey, no, it was GSX I shorted. Yeah, I never touched Carvana, but I should have shorted it, I guess, instead of GSX. Let's see, GSX. This UAVS, for those of you with smaller accounts, it, it looks like an interesting setup. Something to watch for next week. Very high momentum stock. And look at how nicely, it's just how clean it is. Like surfing the 20 day now, building higher lows as this nice range. This is the one I had almost a 10 bagger on, uh, like f uh, back in April. Or maybe not a 10 bagger, but I think it went up like, yeah, 600%, 700% from my initial entry. That was a big one. But now it doesn't have enough volume, volume for me to trade it. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, Citron. Uh. The funny thing is, Citron also sh uh, tweeted about it here. Uh, here at 40 bucks and Muddy Waters tweeted about it where and Muddy Waters tweeted about it at 30 bucks and now it's 135 <laughs> man shorting is not an easy game if you don't you know you know yeah Jesus Christ okay let's see if it can reclaim VVAP or if it can uh, actually keep fading I have 20,000 shares short now on this uh, GSX, pretty decent position. Oh, 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 maybe I caught a big one on this thing. I may have a big one on the hook, like if this thing can fade back to like 90s, whew, could be half a million dollar trade.
kid of. No setup here. This Tesla keeps building a little bit of lower highs. Again, I'm gonna take a starter uh, when, if it starts taking out lows for the day, but nothing crazy. Um, you know, it's still stuck in the range. Like it, this thing could take out the lows for the day, go down, you know, five bucks, and then it reclaims and goes up to 1500. It's just stuck in the range. Like th there's no reason to do any size unless it starts uh, breaking down out of this range, like 1463 area and uh, something like that. If it, you know, breaks down. It needs to confirm to add any size. A <laughs> deep sea fisher, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't look at the spice, I look at the NASDAQ, that's the relevant index for us. But generally, uh, in a good swing trading market, you want the 10 day and the 20 day, the purple and yellow lines, you want them to slope higher and you want the 10 day to be above the 20 day. Those markets, that's when your money is going to be made. Okay. When the 10 and 20 days start sloping lower and w when the 10 days below the 20 day, those are no bueno. You do not trade. You do not trade on the long side. Sw no long swing trades in areas like this. Okay. No trades. Like I do a bunch of meaner version stuff, so I do trade. But the swing trades, you know, s stocks won't go up, okay? No stock will make a big move higher, right? Like no breakout is going to work. Or maybe you have like one or two, but like 95% like are going to fail. This is a very good market, okay? This was, you know, this is like when you, you know, the 20 day here was sloping lower. Here, both of, both of them started sloping higher, but it only lasted for a few weeks. Then the market went bad again. This was a challenging environment, okay? A lot of failed breakouts. Some, some worked, many didn't. Uh, and this was also a great environment. Like every year, you're going to have one or two or maybe three runs. When the market is really, really, really good. And then you like a, one or two like major runs and then another maybe couple of minor ones. And then, you know, the market can be bad for months and months on end and you, you, you can you sit on your hands. That's what you do. You wait for the good times. Right now we are in good times. This is the best market I've ever seen. A long of, lot of old timers say this is the best uh, momentum market since the late 90s. <laughs> no bueno. <laughs> no, it's not Swedish. I don't know what language it is. I guess it's Spanish. I just like to say no bueno. Yeah, it is Spanish. Inte bra, exactly. Hey David, how was your vacation? David should be ashamed of going on vacation in a bull market. Guys, pro tip, you do not go on vacation when the 10 day is sloping higher, when the 20 day is sloping higher, and the 10 day is above the 20 day, you do not go on vacation, okay? You, ha you, you didn't have a choice? <laughs> you didn't have a choice? You always have a choice. You just don't go. Or you bring your laptop. <laughs> your wife would have divorced you. Even if you brought your laptop, she would have uh, divorced you.
Oh, you did trade. Well, okay. You're forgiven. You worked? Okay, good. <laughs> exactly. Bull market is better than divorce. Or more important than divorce. You miss Mara? Yeah, Mara was a big one. Oh. Oh, come on. Now, <laughs> Mara looks like it's bouncing off the rising 20 EMA. Fuck this thing. Fuck Mara. I don't want to look at it. Oh, GSX stopped me out of some of my shares. Oh. I had to reshort here. It, it just, you know, had a random pop and now it's losing VWAP again. I had to, I, I chased 5,000 shares. Oh, he's gonna, Andrew left is gonna be on Fox Business in 10 minutes. Okay. Pen. Oh yeah, pen is going. It had a good setup here. Here it had a good setup. Bounced off the 50 day with higher lows and then it gapped up and... Uh, this is why I removed the average true range. Because it, it gapped up but it doesn't matter. Like I'm interested in the intraday range. And look, it just keeps going. It also had a really good setup like here. Here it had a super setup. This is like a five star, five and a half star on a five star scale. I should probably sell some TTD. If it goes like 515, 516, 517 also. So. Tiny bit. Yeah, overstock. Yep, yep. When it gets stretched like this, you know. I mean, just look at this. If it would, you know, 25%. The 10 days, 25% lower. And the 20 days, 38% lower. These are, you know, this thing has, you know, it's, it's going to make a big move. Uh, like, hopefully we get the trade on Monday. Like, ideal scenario is if it, you know, keeps going today. And then we get a gap up on Monday. And then it reverses and, you know, like, puts in a, like a 25, 35, 40% move lower. That, you know, this thing could potentially go down 40% in a few weeks. Uh, once it, you know, finally pulls back. GSX is not as extended. No, GSX is almost as extended. But this thing too, once it finally pulls back, could very easily pull back like 15, 20, maybe even 30%, you know, in a few days or a week, couple of weeks. Once it starts, you know, pulling back. Maybe I should add more to GSX, this thing on the 5 minute chart. It's just riding the VWAP for now, but if it loses VWAP... 
Oh man, it could go down. Mara is going to do a massive Bitcoin express, so they're going to buy Bitcoin? Or what? Yeah, Mara... <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'll rebuy it on a technical setup. I'll rebuy it. I'll rebuy it. Yeah, machines and computers, yeah. Uh, yeah, close to 300%. Uh, like 260%, I think, average annual uh, growth in seven years. That's after taxes and fees and stuff like that. That's what my girlfriend keeps telling me. Hey, those of you new here, you need to go to this link first. I may add more GSX if it starts breaking, if it loses VWAP later. It's building on a red 60 minute candle here. And you know, the lows of this candle, you know, if it loses that, you know, you can risk like what, 134, 50, like three, three and a half dollars, potentially make $30. Test, okay, test light just got triggered and tiny tiny starter like quarter size with a very tight stop very tight stop just in case just in case it's yeah I, I realize it's range bound but um About yeah I'm yeah I should I don't know how to do it though. Um, here. Uh, oh yeah 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 okay yeah I do know how to do it. Um, let's see here. Okay, I I put the link in my about page. Oh shit, I'm getting a. Uh... Okay.
Oh, what the hell is going on with the OPGM? Wow, what a move. Wow, overstock. What a beast. Like, Workhorse actually looks like a really good setup for next week. It keeps building. Even with yesterday's pullback, it put, put in another higher low, and it's just the range is still intact. This 1740, 1750 range. This, is, this looks like a four, five star setup, in my opinion. Four and a half star setup for next week. I, I'm getting excited. I'm, I may add even more. I may add another 50, 100,000 shares if it starts breaking out next week. Oh, Mara. Yeah, he's gonna speak in like five minutes. Or actually, he should be speaking now because he tweeted it in 11 minutes ago that he's gonna be on Fox News in 10 minutes. So he should be on it right now. Or it should come on at any second. Like GSX so far is building lower highs here. I shorted a bit more. I'm short 22 and half thousand shares right now. You know, it's a little bit of a momentum shift. Doesn't have to go down, but you know, one of these days it will go down. I always buy breakouts. I don't do any range trading or stuff like that. I don't buy any bottom of ranges or anything. It has to be some type of breakout. Okay, I'm gonna cut the stream now. No, no swing trading school today. I did go through a bunch of setups anyways, but um, yeah, have a great weekend guys. Thanks for the moderators. Special thanks to the moderators. And uh, I hope you all have a great weekend. Spend at least a few hours studying setups. That's the only way you're gonna make it in this game. You gotta put in the work. 
no one is gonna do it for you. Alright, good luck guys, see ya on Monday.